Well, firstly, I suppose I would love to just get your reaction to the incredible scenes that we saw in France at the weekend. Um, like, what would you have done <laughs> if you were lifted in a game? <laughs> well, I thought if I thought, well, what if that happened to me? What if Joe Takori lifted me up like Simba out of the Lion King? I think, well, one, he probably would have crushed all my ribs as he lifted me up and... It's just, it's one of those fabulous moments that you just, you just can't help but laughing at and just go, there's sometimes in refereeing, you just go, thank Christ that didn't happen in my game. <laughs> you know, you'd love to see it happen, but you don't want to see it happen in your game. Fair so it was certainly, I've never, I've seen some bits like it. Um, uh, I remember I was talking to somebody the other day about there was a game in sale and I was, I was just there watching it. Um, I had a premiership game the next day. And I was sitting behind Kingsley Jones, who was coaching Sale at the time. And the referee, David Rose, was kind of getting a little bit in the way in the first half. And there was a Welsh centre there, a bit of a lunatic fella, great guy called Lee Thomas. Pretty tough guy. And he said to Lee, look, you need to deal with the referee. Get him out of your channel. You know, so you want to make the tackles. So when whoever they were playing, Gloucester, whoever it was, made a break up the pitch, he just ran beside the referee. And as the referee got to the breakdown, he just shoved him out of the way as they were arriving the breakdown. Didn't even give him a chance to get in trouble, which reminded me of Victor Kaleshi. Is it Kaleshi from the Georgian Claremont winger, or uh, uh, wing forward, who Wayne Barnes was standing in his way. And he just ran out of the line and pushed Wayne and went back into the line. Yeah, I do remember it, that one. It's just moments of madness. Um, I have a terrible reputation for just getting absolutely steamrolled by players who I get in the way of. Billy Vinopola did it to me at um, in um, Olympic Park in a Quinns game. I just got absolutely killed. Uh, the Claremont winger got caught on an inside. The, the worst one is an inside ball on a line out when the scrum half passes off the top to the scrum half back in. And I got Damien Pinot absolutely flattened me. And the only thing I could think about doing was um, picking him up and asking him if he was all right. Was he injured? Did he need help? As I was trying to find my ribs. So I, I lifted him up and went, uh, ça va, ça va bien? <laughs> Et tu blessé? <laughs> and see, you know, try and deflect like that as I was trying to, you know, how many ribs have I got left? Oh, does it hurt though? Because we've got the adrenaline running through our body. Yeah. Does it, it hurt does, you? It, it does because you don't see it coming. You know, yeah. it, that's it. it. No, Whiplash. It's a lie. If I saw it coming, I'd get killed but it hurts a bit more when you don't see it coming. Yeah. You just hope if someone's going to run to you, it's going to be Christian Wade or Dan Robson or, you know, you just hope that, you know, or Zebo before he went to France when he was a young Munster <laughs> winger, he, you know, a bit slimmer. Uh, yeah, them French baguettes will get you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, JP, you've refereed hundreds of top flight matches over the years. So what are the weirdest encounters that you've witnessed as a referee? It, it's it's not a lot of the stuff is in and around the pitch or off pitch um doing games in france um on a thursday night at 9 30 in a pro do match a bit like the video says anything can happen it's the wild west the premiership everything's a bit more online w one thing that kind of a referee world will show you what happens is i was doing a game ryan played it was a, a european cup game montpellier glasgow and I did a game there, and the, uh, the Montpellier 10, uh, I can't remember, it wasn't, I think, it was, yeah, it was um, uh, the, the 10 they had there for a long time, Tranduk, isn't it? He ran forward and did a deliberate knock-on um, from a Glasgow backline pass. And Glasgow boys were, oh, that should be, uh... so I gave a penalty, and I didn't give it a yellow because it wasn't a line break, and it wasn't this, it wasn't that. Afterwards, they have this beautiful spread of food upstairs. Uh, Murat Mar Altred does lovely food upstairs, Um and I'm, I'm tucking into some decent decent food after the game. And Mr. Altrad comes and sits beside me and he's kind of yelling at me in French. What were you doing? How, how was that a penalty against my player? You know, this is crazy. Um, and I'm trying to work out the translations in my head. And Gregor Townshen comes and sits on the other side to me to talk to me about the same incident. That's crazy. How could you not give a yellow card? What are you even doing here? I'm going, hold on, you think I'm crap because I gave a penalty and you think I'm crap because I didn't give a yellow card. I don't know what I'm meant to do here. So I just kind of left them backed out, backed a bit, and they just had an argument together. Mr. Altrad in French and Gregor in Scots, Scottish. And I was just able to eventually just keep walking back towards the door and left and just left them to it. But that's kind of the life as a referee. 
I've never been picked up and thrown around. I've got bundled in to celebrations. When yeah. teams score, they'll deliberately bundle you into a celebration and go piley on. Remember Rory Lawson for Gloucester doing that to me once. Uh, he came up behind, grabbed me, and threw me into a celebration. Was like piley on, piley on. I think that's the only one on the pitch, and I couldn't help but laughing. So I ended up kind of jumping up and down in the in the mosh pit. <laughs> that is amazing. What would how would you have reacted to getting lifted up? Yeah. I've, how, would, you have, would you would you would you Given him a red card because it was it was the way that the opposition team were saying, "Hold oh, on, no, no, you could tell they were like that. You can't let him do that. You can't let him I, do that. Give him a red." I, and you know, I'd be lying if I said I knew what I do. To be yeah. honest, I'd be, I'd be absolutely lying. I think I'd be so in shock and I'd be I'd be wetting myself so much because I just know how far a, a Fijian fellow like that could throw me. Jeez. And I'd be thinking, you know, well, I I, I, I guess you need to red card it. In reality, you need to because. What if someone does something next? What if someone gives them a nuggie, puts them in a headlock and gives them a friendly nuggie? You know, where do you draw the line? You, 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 you can't lift a referee in the air yeah. like Lion King, you know. <laughs> but, you know, these things happen. I'm not, I, I would hate to think what I would have done. Um, I think you probably have to send them off, but you wish you didn't. Maybe that's yeah, the best. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You could tell as the ref was walking off, it, it, it clicked to him. It was like, hold oh, on a minute, I can't let him get away with that. I've got to go and do something. <laughs> I just, I only wish they did it to one of the senior referees like Nigel or Wayne or. That's exactly you know, what we said earlier. Roman, like, if you're going to do it, do it to one of the big dogs, you know, that would be, that would make my day. Oh, God. Well, who was the hardest player that you actually found to referee throughout your career? Um, the hardest players are the best players. They're, more and more now players are disenfranchised, not to, they're disassociated the referees are all you know next job next job jobs of work so it's more the older kind of players who are going out of the game i guess um, peter romani is is a pretty difficult character johnny be the irish guys in scotland um greg laidlaw was probably the hardest guy i had to deal with um that's because he's always on the losing side. So. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I, remember I did a game. I did a game at Gloucester. And, you know, he hasn't got the teeth in. And he's such a good guy. And he's such an bright guy and a good captain. And he comes up and he's so, such got that Borders accent that can be quite tough to understand when they got the gum shield in. So he had the gum shield in. He came up to me during a game. And it was about four penalties into the second half. And they were all against Gloucester. And they were all simple stuff like, not rolling away or offside, nothing. They just happened to be penalties. And he came up and he said, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, sorry, Greg, what, what, what do you want me to look at? Hey, nee, nee, nee. I'm like, it's good. I, can you take out your gum shield? I'm so sorry. I, I, I really do apologize. Uh, I can't understand what you're saying. So he took out the gum shield and said it again, but he'd no, not that many teeth in. And he went, hey, and he, something us. And I was like, oh, he means I'm not doing very nice things to them. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, no worries, Gregor. Uh, Greg, I'll have a look at that uh, in the next 10 minutes. And after the game, he was all nice and done up after the game, and they, they won or whatever it was. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, I said you're completely in us to the whole game. I was like, ah, that's what you were saying. Sorry, I didn't. So Gregor was always, or sorry, Greg was always a, a real tough guy to deal with. But, you know, often the tough guys are the guys you want to deal with. Rory Cockett's another guy from Cast who can be, quite tricky um pain in the ass. yeah yeah it's normally the scrum halves yeah, sergio so I was say the nines it's always the nines sergio is pretty pretty difficult as well you know those sorts of guys <laughs>